All right, diving into a story. And this one, well, it really proves that even those headlines that seem, I don't know, almost straightforward, they can have uh, they can have some layers, especially when Hollywood's involved. We're talking Francesca Eastwood. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah. Daughter of Clint Eastwood and Frances Fisher. She was recently arrested. Suspicion of felony domestic violence. Hmm. And on the surface, it might seem like, oh, another celebrity, another scandal. But there are a few details, at least for me, I got to say, that are raising more questions than answers. So that's the mission for this deep dive. Balanced understanding, not gossip. What do we know? And then what's interesting about it. Yeah, let's break it down. Okay. So the arrest happened on Saturday, October 12th, Beverly Hills. Police were responding to a possible domestic violence incident. You know, so far, kind of standard, right? Right. Here's where it gets a little strange. This didn't happen at a house. This arrest went down at the Beverly Hills Police Department's safety zone. Really? See, that's interesting. That's what makes this a deep dive. Right. Because that little detail throws a wrench into, like, every assumption about how this thing might have happened. Totally. Because, I mean, police stations have those safety zones to be, like, you know, a neutral, safe environment for anyone who might be involved in a situation. That's not Mm -hmm. typically where you think an arrest is going to happen, you know. Right. Yeah. It wasn't like a fight at home that escalated to a 911 call. So was this a prearranged meeting to deal with something, you know, volatile that somehow went wrong or did one person involved kind of pick that spot knowing it was well you know under surveillance right it's just it adds a layer to it it does it makes you think like there was a plan it wasn't just something that happened yeah okay so eastwood was booked suspicion of felony domestic violence specifically this is under california penal code 273.5 bail was set at fifty thousand dollars but even the release date is kind of a question mark Some sources are saying she was due in court Tuesday morning. Others say she's already been released. And that right there is important because early on in these stories, it's like, you know, telephone. Yeah. Things get mixed up. Right. And it just highlights how important it is to stick with what's verified, especially when we're talking about legal stuff. Yeah. I mean, jumping to conclusions based on those first reports, it's like judging a book by the cover. You're not really getting the whole story right. Which is what we're trying to avoid this arrest. It's chapter one in what's probably going to be a long legal process. But while that's the headline, I think we need to zoom out a little. Look at the full picture here. Francesca Eastwood, she's not just Clint Eastwood's daughter. I mean, she's been building a career. She's been in old that movie. Twin Peaks. She was even on reality TV for a while. Mrs. Eastwood and Company. This isn't exactly someone who shies away from the spotlight. No, not at all. But then there have been challenges, too. Right. Back in 2015, there was that DUI arrest. Mm. And right now, she's with actor Alexander Wraith. They have a six-year-old son. And that, see, that's where things get really, you know, they get tricky. This isn't just a legal case. Right. It's public. Mm. It involves a celebrity who already has, you know, a public life and image. Think about it. If this was two people we'd never heard of, would it even be a blip on the radar? That's a good point. Yeah. Would every little detail be analyzed? Probably not. That Eastwood name, I mean, for better or worse, it adds something different. It does. It's like everybody becomes like an armchair detective when it's a famous person. Totally. And speaking of scrutiny, I did see some articles mentioning that that her boyfriend, he reportedly had visible injuries when they were at the station. Uh Okay. But... Big butt, the details about what really happened, that's still really murky. Oh, yeah. We're not speculating. We're here to understand. And that means unpacking all of all the different angles that come with a story like no, that. Definitely. And this right here, this is why understanding how the legal system works, it's actually super important. Oh, absolutely. Because it's really easy to get caught up in like the headlines. Right. But there's a whole process Slowly. that happens behind the scenes. And it takes time, right? Yeah. I mean, you're saying Francesca Eastwood arrested on suspicion of felony domestic violence. To a lot of people, they hear that, they think, case closed. But legally, that's not a conviction. Exactly. It's more like the starting point. It really is. I mean, the police, they had reason to think something big might have happened. Right. Hence the arrest. But now it's on the district attorney. Okay. They're the ones, they look at all the evidence And they decide if they're even going to press charges. Like, is this even strong enough to go to court? So what kind of evidence are we talking? What are they looking at? Oh, it's everything. Witness statements, for sure. Of course. Any physical evidence, if there is any. These days, they even look at, 
you know, your texts, your social media, anything that lines up with the stories or contradicts them. Wow. It's like building a puzzle, really. And that's got to be even more complicated with domestic violence. Oh, for sure. Because then you've got this whole other element of like the emotional stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've read about cases where a victim, they decide not to cooperate at all. Right. And it could be for all sorts of reasons. And that is something that often gets missed, especially when it's high profile. It's like there's this human part of it that goes way beyond legal strategy. Right. Someone might be afraid, afraid of what happens if they speak out. They might still care about the person who hurt them. Yeah. Might even be hoping to, like, work things out. It's messy. It is. It's rarely clear cut. And that's why you need to be so careful how you handle these cases. It really reminds you that there's a whole lot going on that, as outsiders, we just don't see. 100%. Yeah. And bigger picture, this isn't just a Hollywood thing, right? Yeah. Domestic yeah. violence, it affects everybody. Uh -huh. Celebrities, regular people. It doesn't matter your age, your race, how much money you've got. It's one of those things that just, it's stays hidden because people don't talk about it. Exactly. And that's why, like, having these conversations, even if they're tough, making sure people know they're not alone, that's huge. It is. And making sure there's help out there for anybody who needs it. It doesn't matter who they are, who hurt them. Speaking of backgrounds, you know, one article mentioned Eastwood was actually married for a really short time back mm -hmm. in 2013. Like, a super fast romance annulment even faster. And look, I'm not saying it means anything about this case, right. but it did make me realize we only see the tip of the iceberg with these public figures. That's a great point. Because we try to put them in these neat little boxes. We do. Based on headlines or what they say in an interview. Mm. But famous or not, everybody's got a past. Experiences that make them who they are. That marriage, maybe it was a mistake, maybe it was something else entirely, who knows. But it's part of her story. It is. It's like even with the cameras always on, there's still so much we're not seeing. Exactly. And it's a good reminder, I think, to give people space, even when they're in the public eye, especially with stuff that's personal. Agreed. Now, not to get all gossipy, but since we're on the topic of things we don't see, that detail about Eastwood's boyfriend, the one about him having visible injuries at the station. Hmm. I mean, obviously, that brings up a lot of questions. It does. And it's normal to be curious. But we don't have all the facts. Right. And without them, it's just not responsible to jump to conclusions. Well, we can guess all day long, but that can really hurt people. It's like that game you were talking about, telephone. Right. Except instead of just getting details mixed up, now speculation could actually affect how this legal case goes. Absolutely. And somebody's reputation. Wrong. It's a huge reminder that words have power. They do. We've got to be careful what we say, especially with something this sensitive. We have been unpacking a lot here, the legal stuff, the complexities of domestic violence, what it's like to be in the public eye with all this going on. Yeah, we really have gone way past the headlines with this one, looking at the Francesca Eastwood arrest, but also, you know, the legal side, the reality of domestic violence, how public opinion plays into all of this. It's been uh, quite a deep dive for sure. It really has. Just shows you something might seem simple on the surface, yeah. especially with the famous name attached, but underneath. There's always more to it. Always. So we wait. Let the legal system do what it does. Hopefully more information comes out. But in the meantime, from your view, what's the, I don't know, the most important thing for people listening to take away? Oh, that's a good question. I think it really comes down to empathy. Hmm. Domestic violence is serious. It affects so many people. And it's just, it's never simple. So approaching these situations, knowing that, understanding there's more to the story than we see right away, that's crucial. It is. Because it's easy to judge, you know? Yeah. Especially these days, social media and all that. Exactly. The court of public opinion. It moves so fast. Oh, tell me about it. Nuance gets lost. Due process, gone. And social media, I mean, it can make that even worse. Echo chambers where opinions just get louder and louder without the full picture. It's a good reminder to to check ourselves, really. Are we looking for different points of view, sticking to information that's been verified, and when we talk about these tough topics, doing it with, you know, empathy and respect? Couldn't have said it better myself. Understanding, not judgment. That's what we need more of. I like that. This whole case, even though it's got a name we recognize, it reminds us that there are real people behind every headline. Makes you think twice about, about the news, how we react to it. For sure. Always more below the surface than we might realize at first glance. Well said. And on that note, I think we're going to wrap up this deep dive. I think that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for being here with us as we went through all this. It's been um, it's been complicated and honestly very human. So stay curious, folks. Keep asking questions. And when you come across those tough stories, approach them with empathy. We'll be back next time with another deep dive. Until then, stay informed out there.